I've been using a lot of Fibonacci levels in my analysis, and you can find those from my market analysis videos as well as my Facebook post on growing wealth. Today, I'm going to share with you how you can do this analysis on your own, and better still, to use Fibonacci levels to guide your trades and enhance your trading profitability. Do drop a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Your support means a lot to me in growing and pushing this channel forward. So what are Fibonacci levels? These are derived from the Fibonacci sequence itself. And how this sequence is derived is as such. You add up the first two numbers in the sequence, and then you get the third one. And if you add up the second and the third number in the sequence, you'll get the fourth one. So 0 plus 1 gives you 1. 1 plus 1 gives you 2. Likewise, if we move on further down into the sequence, we get 21 plus 34 equal to 55. 34 plus 55 equal to 89 and so on and so forth. These numbers by themselves are not so exciting. What's exciting is the golden ratio that is hidden amongst them. The golden ratio is 1.618. And you can get this ratio when you take a number in the sequence and divide it by the number before it. So 13 divided by 8 will give you an answer that's very close to 1.618. Of course, it is not very accurate for the first few sequences as the numbers are small, but as the number gets bigger, the ratio approximates to 1.618. Now the inverse of this golden ratio simply gives you 0.618. And the last number that interests us is 0.382. How do you get this ratio? You can get this ratio when you take a number in a sequence and divide it by the number two places to the right of it. So 21 divided by 55 will give you an answer that is close enough to 0.382. And likewise, as we progress further into the sequence, the ratio approximates to 0.382. So the golden ratio plays an important part in nature, and you can find them in many places. In the curvature of shells, hurricanes, placements of the seed in sunflower and pine cones, how a tree branches, and even in our faces. Mysteriously, it has been working wonders in the projection of stock prices in the stock market as well. So remember these three ratios as we'll be using them a lot throughout this video. How do we put this ratio to good use in the projection of stock prices? This is achieved through two main basic tools that you would have seen me use a lot in my analysis videos. They are none other than the Fibonacci Retracement Tool as well as the Fibonacci Extension Tool. Firstly, Retracement and Extension. This depends a lot on context. So let us lay out some groundwork first before moving forward. Now on an uptrend, we have prices making higher highs and higher lows. We also have the impulsive wave that is trending up and the corrective wave that is trending down. And on a downtrend, everything just happens in the reverse. Prices now make lower highs and lower lows. And along with that, we now have the impulsive wave that is trending downwards and the corrective wave that is trending upwards. Therefore, on the uptrend, the Fibonacci retracement tool is projecting for the price range where the corrective wave is going to reach, based on the previous impulsive wave. And the extension tool is used to project where the next impulsive wave will bring us to, based on the previous impulsive wave and the corrective wave. When we talk about downtrend, the retracement tool is still projecting for the corrective wave, and extension tool would be projecting for the impulsive wave but the direction of these waves are opposite now. Following the theory of Fibonacci levels, you can observe that prices tend to retrace or extend to key Fibonacci ratios. Remember that technical analysis is all about probability and that TA works partially because of self-fulfilling prophecy. So let us take a look at an example. I'm sure that one look from this chart, it should be very clear to you that prices are on an uptrend, as the moving averages are all aligned in sequence and are sloping up. And as we see that prices are going higher during an uptrend, we can say that this is the impulsive wave. And then once we see a bearish candle forming, we can think to ourselves that maybe this is the end of the impulsive wave and that the corrective wave is about to come. But how far will this corrective wave retrace us? That is an unknown. So for this purpose, we can use the Fibonacci retracement tool. What we want to do is to connect the low and the high from the start of the impulsive wave to the end of the impulsive wave. After that is done, then this level will appear on the charts. So what this tool does is that it treats the height of the impulsive wave as 100%, from 0 to 100. And then it marks out the levels of the respective Fibonacci ratios. And we can see that that is the 38.2 and 61.8. 
So previously, we have went through these levels, the 38.2, 61.8, as well as the 161.8 over here. In addition to these are the 23.6 and the 50% level, which are also monitored by market participants out there. Personally, I do not rely on the 23.6 level much, as it tends to be too weak. But it is just there on the chart because I did not remove it. So based on these levels, we can expect prices to retrace back to the 38.2 level if the bear is not as strong. And on a stronger correction, prices will then reach the 50% level or the 61.8% level. If it breaks the 61.8 level, then it signals that the bears are very strong and that there is a risk of a change in trend that is about to happen. Okay, with that, let us have more real practice on the charts. This is the example that you have seen just now, and this is the stock chart for Microsoft, and we are looking at the daily chart. So I'm using a thing of swim platform for this demonstration, and if you are using the same platform, feel free to get some hands-on and practice along with me. So on the platform, you can get to the Fibonacci retracement tool under this icon over here, and just go over to Fibonacci retracement. So following on from our example previously, you can see that there's another huge impulsive wave over here. And once we see a bearish pin bar, which is a bearish candlestick pattern forming, we can think to ourselves that maybe the compulsive wave is going to run out of strength soon and that corrective wave is about to follow. So following that line of thinking, you can head on over to the Fibonacci retracement tool and then just connect the low, which is the start of the impulsive wave, to the end of the impulsive wave. So we connect the start, which is point A to point B. And can you see that immediately, in this case, the prices retrace back to the 23.6 level first, which I've previously said that it is normally a very weak level of support. And true enough, it broke through shortly after, show a little bounce, and then followed by a larger correction all the way back down to the 38.2 level. All right, and when you right click on this, you can edit the properties of the Fibonacci retracement. So over here, you can see that I've unchecked the 0 0.786 level as well which is another level that, that some people may tend to look at, but I choose to ignore it because I feel that it is not as strong, just like the 0.236 level. So along with that, you can change the color of the different levels and the style and the thickness of the line itself. So does the Fibonacci retracement work all the time? Well, the answer is no. You can see that sometimes it does not work as perfectly. For example, if we move on to the next impulsive wave that is occurring over here. Now, if we take this to be the start of the impulsive wave, and this to be the end of the impulsive wave, you can see that the correction occurs to the 61.8 level, and then the 61.8 level did not hold so well, and it spiked through a little bit downwards. So in these cases, the Fibonacci retracement tool is not respected in this correction that occurred over here. All right, other than individual stocks, you can also use the Fibonacci retracement tool to analyze stock indexes, such as the SPY, which I've been basing my analysis on the Fibonacci retracement for some time right now. Previously for Microsoft, we are using the Fibonacci retracement as an uptrend. But right now, for the SPY, it is currently in a very strong downtrend over here. So in such a case, this is the impulsive wave, this is the corrective wave, and this is the next impulsive wave downwards. And what we want to do is to connect the start of the impulsive wave, this time is the high at point A, to the end of the impulsive wave, which is the low at point B. And if we connect point A to point B, what do we get? We get something like this. So you can see that the initial corrective wave does not respect any Fibonacci retracement levels, but subsequently you can see that it corrects back higher to reach the 50% level and then broke through it and corrects higher again to reach a 61.8 level. Now things start to get complicated when we take into account the magnitude of the waves, and it could make analysis using Fibonacci retracement rather subjective. So to overcome this, you need to have enough practice to make the correct judgment. Now what do I mean by that? This is the wave that we have seen. But can you also see that now we have a higher high and a higher low? So if you treat the wave as such, then you will have the impulsive wave, the corrective wave, the impulsive wave, this is the corrective wave. And here comes the problem. Is this the impulsive wave or the corrective wave? And likewise, should this be the impulsive wave of a new uptrend or still consider the corrective wave of the previous downtrend. So can you see that multiple perspectives starts to come in now and it could serve to confuse your judgment. Now within this impulsive corrective and impulsive wave, we can also treat this as just one entire huge impulsive wave. And then subsequently treat these small waves as 
a huge corrective wave itself. Now what impact would this difference have on our analysis? Let's take a look. If we take this as the start of the impulsive wave and this as the end of the impulsive wave, connecting them using the Fibonacci retracement tool will yield levels as such. So if we take this as the entire huge impulsive wave instead, can you see that right now on this huge corrective wave, prices are now resisted at the 38.2 level instead of the 50% level previously seen. And following this, following this analysis, the next huge resistance will be at the 50% level as well as the horizontal resistance at the $280 level. And if it broke through this, the next huge resistance will then be at the 61.8% level, coinciding with the $294 horizontal level, as well as the 50-day simple moving averages. So this is where the subjectivity comes in. Should you draw the Fibonacci retracement as such, or should you adjust it and take this as the corrective wave instead? So what I can say to you is to keep your mind open and consider different perspectives and alternatives. So only with practice, then will your judgment improve and make better judgment for your analysis. Now let's say if we think that this is the start of a new bull run now, because prices have made a higher low and also officially made a higher high. In such a scenario, this is now the impulsive wave and this is the corrective wave. And this will be the next impulsive wave. So in this scenario, how then can we project the potential price range where this new impulsive wave will bring us to? Will it be this level, this level, or this level? For that, we can use the Fibonacci extension tool, which is this icon over here. And what we want to do is to connect the start of the impulsive wave to the end of the impulsive wave. So this end of the impulsive wave is also the start of the next corrective wave. So we want to connect then the start of the corrective wave to the end of the corrective wave that is over here. For the Fibonacci extension tool, we want to connect point A to point B and then to point C, which is the end of the corrective wave. And then we will get levels as such again, the 38.2, 50%, 61.8, 100% the mark, and also the 161.8. So following this, you can see that right now, it is facing a resistance at the 61.8 Fibonacci extension level. If prices can breach through this level, the next likely level following the Fibonacci extension tool will be at the 100% Fibonacci extension level. And this level just nice coincides with the 50-day moving average. So this is a potential resistance, and the next potential strong resistance will be at this level over here. So far, we've been looking at the Fibonacci retracement and the extension tool to project stock prices on an uptrend. So how do we do this for stocks that are on a downtrend? For this, using the Facebook stock as an example, as you can see that this period over here, Facebook is experiencing a very strong downtrend. And then on the downtrend, if we trace out the wave pattern like this, the upwards trending wave would be the corrective wave, and the downward trending wave would be the impulsive wave. So here we have the point A, the start of the impulsive wave, to point B, which is the end of the impulsive wave. So following this, we want to use the Fibonacci retracement tool and connect the start of the impulsive wave to the end of the impulsive wave. And we zoom in closer to take a look, you can see that after this impulsive wave, the next corrective wave upwards is being resisted very nicely at a 38.2 Fibonacci retracement level. And if we bring this downwards to the next impulsive wave, you can see that once again, prices are initially being resisted at a 38.2 level, it broke through and then resisted at a 50% level. So after this, the bulls have lost their strength and the downtrend continues. And we have our next impulsive wave. So moving forward, you can see that the stock prices for Facebook respects the Fibonacci retracement tool very nicely. This time being resisted at the 50% level again, as well as the horizontal resistance level at about $159. So you can just keep doing this to project for the potential resistance price level too. And you can see that finally, for this impulsive wave over here, prices on the corrective wave do not respect the Fibonacci level as well anymore. It broke through the 61.8% level before coming back down again. So far, we've been looking at the daily chart. The Fibonacci retracement and extension tool can be used for analyzing other time frames as well. So let's just head on over to the SPY and then go on to the monthly time frame. 
So you can see very nicely that I have marked out one Fibonacci retracement for you over here. So this is an uptrend and on the impulsive wave, we connect the point A, which is the start to the end, the point B. And subsequently, prices retrace for three months, which forms the corrective wave and hit the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement before shooting off again into the next impulsive wave. Okay, so how can Fibonacci levels help you with your trading? Think of these levels as support and resistance. On an uptrend, you can use the Fibonacci retracement tool to initiate long trade positions when prices drop to key levels such as the 38.2, the 50% level or the 61.8% level. And then the best thing is for this level to coincide with the horizontal or moving average support. So this will tell you that the prices are at a strong support and any further downside would be minimal and restricted. And on an uptrend, you can use the Fibonacci extension tool to plan profit targets along the key levels and adjust the stop loss accordingly to protect your profit if prices are resisted by key levels. And likewise, on the downside, you can initiate short positions when prices rise to key levels, which is the 38.2, 50 and 61.8% level. And then it is best that this, that the key Fibonacci retracement level coincides with a horizontal or moving average resistance to signify any furthermore upside such that you can short the stock down short the stock down and then to plan and then you can use the fibonacci extension level to plan your profit target along accordingly along the key fibonacci extension levels and also to adjust your stop loss or profit target accordingly to protect to protect your profit if prices are supported by the key fibonacci extension levels all right so with that i hope you have learned something new and with the knowledge on how to effectively use the Fibonacci retracement and extension tool to project for potential support and resistances of price level, I hope that this will help you out better in executing in the planning and execution of your trades. As always, remember to drop a like and subscribe. And thank you so much for supporting the channel. See you next time.